promoting our sub-region is that of economic emancipation. In my welcome remark, I mentioned that in transforming the SADC with the double C into SADC with the single C in 1992, the leader of this region had one key objective, to use the principle, the political achievements to advance social economic development and the transformations in our region. Needless to say, and I'm sure I will be speaking on behalf of many citizens in this region, that this objective has not been realized. And so, be honest, if there is no concerted effort, it will take ages for this objective to be realized. And I'm not saying this without evidence. Last year, 2018, for instance, we set a target of GDP growth of 7%, but it grew by only 3.1%. This was below the continent's average growth of 3.5%. The Eastern Africa region grew of 5.7%. The Northern Africa region grew by 4.9% and the 3.3% grow in the Western Africa region. Our intra-region and extra-regional trade performance is also not good. In 2017, the SADC regions with 16 member states, population of 327 million people, a total area of 9,882,000, and 959 square kilometers, and which is blessed with the abundant natural resources. Owner exported goods worth the USA dollar, 143 million billion. On the other hand, Mexico and Vietnam, country with the area of 1,943,000 and 955 square kilometers, and 300. 31,210 square kilometer and a population of 132.5 million people and 97.5 million people. Each exported goods worth USA dollar 403 billion and a USA dollar 214 billion respectively. This clearly shows that our economies are not performing well and we are still very far from achieving our economic objective. I'm saying this very openly. There is no need to hide this. Excellencies, of course there is many reasons why our economy are not performing as expected. One of them being lack of information on so the opportunities available in our respective countries. In May, in May this year, for instance, I had the opportunity to visit four SADC countries. Three of them, due to the drought and the other natural disaster, were experiencing shortage of food. It surprised me to hear that those countries were planning to import food stuff from outside Africa. While in Tanzania, we were struggling to find the market for 2.5 million tons of food, which was a surplus. But that is just one example. Due to lack of information, our countries are also importing cars, sugar, and fuel very far away from our region. While some SADC member states, South Africa, Mauritius, and Angola, for instance, are producing the same respectively. Importation and importation importation costs also contributed to the poor economic performance of our region. Studies have shown that the cost relating to customs in our region are three times higher than in Asia and five times higher than in the OECD countries. This cost compounded by transportation costs make the situation even worse. I'm reliably informed that it costs 
less of a law to import animal feeds and refinery sugar from South America to our countries than to import the same from within our region. Difference in trade and investment policies, laws, regulations, and the standards has also its fair share in hindering businesses and economic cooperations between and among SADC member states, and thus affecting our economic performance. For example, it is possible today for a good that is produced and cleared in one member state to be then to enter the market of another member state for not being able to meet the quality and the standards. Why can't we harmonize our policy, laws, regulations, and the standards, and therefore be able to increase the volume and the value of our intra and the extra regional trade? Unless we do that, it will remain a daydream for our region to fully realize its economic objectives. Your Excellencies, at this juncture, allow me also to mention that apart from these three challenges that I have mentioned and highlighted, there is one more challenge that hinders our effort towards economic emancipation, which to me is the biggest of all. That challenge concerns the low level of industrialization in our region. Your Excellencies, history has taught us that no country or region in the world has ever developed without undergoing the process of industrialization. Today, all developed nations are the industrialized countries. Just to give you an idea of why the industrial sector is important, the World Trade Organization statistics, the view report of the year 2018, states that the value of the global trade in 2017, reached USA$23.01 trillion, of which USA$17.73 trillion were merchandise trade and the USA$5.28 trillion commercial services. Of course, importance to note, however, is that of the USA$17.73 trillion merchandise trade, 70%, almost USA dollars, 12.41 trillion were manufactured goods. In that same year, Africa in total exported goods worth USA dollar, 417 billion. And as I mentioned earlier, SADC exported goods worth USA dollar, 143 billion. More than 60% of the Africa's and the SADC exports were raw materials, mainly agriculture products, mining, and the fuel. That means that Africa, including SADC, has not benefited much from that increase of global trade. This explains why Africa's share in the global trade is less than 3%. It also explains why the terms of trade are always in favor of other regions. For instance, in the year 2017, Africa exported goods worth a USA dollar 417 billion, but its importation was USA dollar 534 billion. The reason is simple. We are selling goods of low value. It therefore requires us, for instance, to sell not less than 20 tons of cotton, coffee, or tea to buy just one tractor. And this also explains why our people continue to remain poor. Low material in the world market are sold at a very low price. In addition, due to low level of industrialization in our region, the problem of unemployment is increasing. By exporting our raw material, it means we are also exporting jobs. Your Excellencies, distinguished invited guests, ladies 
and gentlemen. It is against this background that I would like to seize this opportunity to commend SADC for adopting the industrialization strategy and the roadmap from 2015 to 2063. I also commend the decision that industrialization is a priority in each year's SADC summit theme and for introducing industrialization week prior to each ordinary summit. I am confident that this effort will go a long way in promoting industrialization in our respective countries and the region at large. In this respect, I wish to ensure this August body that issues pertaining to industrialization will be the top priority of our chairmanship. In this respect, I once again wish to applaud the effort undertaken by our outgoing chair, Namibia, in improving infrastructure in our region. It goes without saying that infrastructure is any addressing all impediments and the bottlenecks, including transit rail, bureaucratic red tape, corruptions, and etc. This is why Tanzania has chosen a conducive business environment for inclusive and sustainable industrial development, increase intra-regional trade and job creation to be the theme of the SADC during her chair, chairmanship. It is our sincere hope that the implementation of this theme will serve as a catalyst for sustainable industrial development, increase the intra-regional trade and job creation in our region. Your Excellencies, Head of States and Government, before I conclude my statement, allow me to say what I have always been telling my comp compatriot, and I'm sure you always do, that our country are not poor. Our country are not poor. They are very rich. We have all the resources to make us rich. Apart from large populations of 327 million people, Sadek Regional is a home to the large number of wildlife and the plant species that are of extremely important. Not to mention livestock and the marine ecosystems. The region has also widely divest of ecozones, including grasslands, bush fields, Carols, savanna, and the riparian zones. In addition, our region is endowed with the hydrocarbons material, graphite, ethens, and so on, and the minerals resources. Indeed, as a matter of fact, our region contributes to the world about 18% of cobalt, 21% of zinc, 26% of gold, 55% of diamond. 72% platinum groups of metals and etc. So, we are not poor. These are indeed resources that one can hope to have in order to be rich. We must therefore work together to ensure that we exploit and utilize these resources for the benefits of our country and our people. This is important because it is only through cooperation that we will be able to utilize these resources effectively and achieve our objective. And this is what the founding fathers of this organization and our respective countries, including the late Mwarim Julius Kambarage Nyerere, Mze Kennedy Kahunda, the late Samora Machel, the late Agustin Neto, the late Sese Kama, the Red Nelson Mandela, Mze Robert Mugabe, Mze Samu Mjoma, just to mention a few, have taught us that the power of unity, when it is channeled with the purpose to achieve an objective, can provide a remarkable result. It can even move a mountain. Indeed, it was because of unity our finding fathers with the limited resources 
were able to fight colonialism and emerged victorious. This is why I appeal to you, Your Excellencies, that let us work together to ensure the dream that our founding fathers had in establishing this organization is achieved and our goal for social economic transformations and the emancipations of our region is realized. Indeed, I personally believe that if we can work together, our economy will not grow by 3.1%. We shall be able to improve trade between us. Our industrial sector will grow. Our contribution to the global trade shall increase. Our people will no longer remain poor. And decent jobs will be available to our young people. In addition, I believe if we work together, peace and security will prevail in our region. And we shall also have a strong air warning mechanism and a system that will help us deal or reduce the impact of these natural disasters. Your Excellency, I have worked you to work together in order to achieve our objective. However, at this juncture, allow me also to challenge our Secretariat. I'm saying this because all the problems that I have highlighted which currently confronting our region happen while we have our own institution, that is the Secretariat, which is supposed to help us member states overcome them. I personally believe that if our Secretariat would perform efficiently and effectively its function, it would have found the answers to the question why over the past 10 years our GDP growth has been decreasing even by advice. The last time that our GDP grew by more than 5% was the year 2008, whereby it grew by 5.7%. Of course, in the year 2005, 2006, and 2007, our GDP grew by 6.6%, 7.3%, and 8.0% respectively. This is the GDP for SADC countries. However, since then, our economic growth has never grown by more than 5%. 2009, it grew by 0.6%. 2010, only 4%. 2011, 4%. 2012, 4.4%, 2013, 4.3%, 2014, 3.4%, 2015, 2.2%, 2016, 1.4%, 2017, 3%, and the last year, 2018, 3.1%. Had our Secretariat also lived up to its duty, our country would have known the reason why. After two conservative years of positive trade balance, in 2010 and 2011, SADC regional external position deteriorated to a negative balance of USA dollar 17 billion in 2015 and the USA dollar 9 billion in 2016, and they improved a little bit in 2011 by USA dollar 1 billion. These are some of the critical questions that our Secretariat must address and advise member states accordingly for a new direction. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I will be remiss of me to end my speech without saying anything on Zimbabwe. As we are all aware, this brother and sister country has been on 
sanctions for a long time. These sanctions have not only affected the people of Zimbabwe and their government, but our entire region. It is like a human body. When you chop one of its parts, it affects the whole body. Therefore, I would like to seize this opportunity to argue the international community to lift up sanctions it imposed on Zimbabwe. This brother country, after all, has now opened a new chapter and it is ready to engage with the rest of the world. It is therefore, I believe, in the interest of all parties concerned to see these sanctions be removed. In this respect, I wish also to argue all SADC member states to continue to speak with one voice on the issue of Zimbabwe. Long live SADC, long live Africa, a luta continua. I thank you for your kind attention. Asante Sandra.